And you're watching Paul Corn Bow Hunting Channel. Hey everybody, it's Paul Corn here from the Paul Corn Bow Hunting Channel. Today I'm going to do a video on shot placement or kind of deer reaction shot placement. I kind of try to wrap some things together and try to show you some things that I've actually uh, noticed over the last uh, several years as we video a lot of these hunts. I was having a conversation about this on the phone, oh, I don't know, last week with a real good friend of mine from Texas, Bart Carroll, and he said, you should really do a video on that. It makes a lot of sense. So I thought about it. I'm going to try this and just talk a little bit about shot placement and where the reactions of the deer. I have personally shot over 300 whitetails with a bow, and I've been outfitting for almost 20 years, been filming hunts for 25 to 30 years, so seen a lot of different animals uh, that have been shot at and hit and missed and a lot of reactions through the years with a bow and arrow. One of the things that I've, I started talking about probably in the last couple of years and I really started to notice it when I started to really do a lot more video is that the reactions of the deer when their heads are down. It's kind of crazy, but if you pay attention to one thing, if you're watching TV or you're watching your own videos or you're watching just stuff that's on YouTube, you'll notice that deer seem to react a lot more violently when their head is down as opposed to their head being up. And I've thought a lot about this because I've noticed that when I shoot deer in the woods in a more natural setting where a lot of them, a lot of times I stop the deer. So if I am at full draw and deer gets into my shooting lane and I give them a little meh, so they stop, put the pin on them, shoot them, they move a little bit. Every time you shoot at a deer, they tend to move a little bit, at least a little bit. That's the best case you can hope for. It's very hard sometimes to predict how much they're going to move, how they're going to react. But it seems like when that head is up and they're in a more alert position, they just don't react as violently. When that head is down, I kind of have a theory that when you shoot, they're more surprised and they're kind of in and they're kind of loaded and they're in a, a, a position that they can, that head can come up and that body can go down. It kind of creates like a teeter-totter effect where it's a lot harder for them to do that when they're when they're up and alert or kind of kind of can see what's going on around them. I'll show you some examples here of video footage of uh, different deer that have reacted differently based on being up or being down. And it's not just deer. I've noticed it with other things, with hogs, with, uh, with bear, with turkey, with mule deer, almost everything. It seems like you would think that common sense or, you know, it, it, in practicality, if an animal has their head down feeding and it's buried into like a bean field, it's relaxed and it's eating, that that deer wouldn't react as violently as a deer that's, you just stopped or that's actually walking and is a little bit more skittish. Usually not the case. Usually they're almost always more, there's more action or reaction to them when that head is down. And it finally just kind of hit me in the head. And I thought I was, I, I really hadn't heard anybody talk too much about this. I've never had a conversation about it with anyone. I did, after Bart and I had a conversation the other day, I kind of went on the internet and I searched and I did find some videos on the internet. One of them was actually very good. It was a guy shooting at a doe, which does tend to even react more to the sound of the of a bow than, than what the bucks do when we're talking about whitetails. But I did find a video that was titled, Don't Shoot When Their Head Is Down. And I'm like, wow. how I'm, So people are figuring this out. And, and I think when you start to watch video, in, in this day and age, more people watch stuff on TV or on YouTube or on their phone than they actually go out and do it. And, uh, you know, it's, I think it's much more advantageous if you actually go out and learn the stuff and do it. I, I also realize that you're going to have more time to watch it on TV. But when you're watching it on TV or on YouTube, why not kind of view it as the educational aspect of what you're watching? Like, what, what does the animal do at the sound of the bow? How is it reacting? Are these, these things that you can help you in a practical situation. Now, being an outfitter, being an avid hunter, doing a lot of bow hunting and being around this a lot and seeing a lot of things, I do realize that every time we shoot at a deer, it's always under duress. 
I've hunted with some of the best hunters in the world, and when they're shooting under duress, things don't happen exactly the way you see it. Or like a, one, one good example of that is, I guess, how much a deer is quartering to you. Almost all the deer that I tracked on a Tombstone Creek outfitting in Missouri, and with you know people in Wisconsin and other, just any place, we just got back from a javelina hunt, and yeah. I just did it. I shot a javelina, I knew it was quartering a little bit, but it was really quartering more than what I thought. So when I get up to the animals, like where, it ex where the arrow exited was really further back than what I thought. Now, I realize that you know I could have deflected off a rib and maybe it changed the trajectory of the arrow a little bit, but still, there's a lot going on in a short amount of time, and it, you know, you're, you're just trying to make a shot, and when you can see the side of the animal really good, you just assume it's broadside. If I had a dollar for every time somebody told me, yeah, that deer was perfectly broadside, or that bear, or that doesn't matter what it's hog or antelope or whatever, it was perfectly broadside. Rarely are they ever perfectly broadside and usually they're quartering to you a little bit. So I think it's really important to really kind of hone in on the angle. I know there's a lot of things to think about at the moment of truth. You're just focusing on breathing and you're trying to you know, get a shot at the side of the deer. I don't like all these other, you know, shots of, you know, head on and, and uh, really hard quartering away and stuff like that. I really like a broadside shot. You know, I can get behind that shoulder and I can aim at the lower third of the, of, when we're talking white-tailed deer, most any North American animal, you're aiming at the top of the lower third. So in other words, I take the animal, I split it into threes, I'm aiming at the top of the lower third. So if the animal doesn't duck at all, I, it's going to be a good shot, but odds are, no matter what you're shooting at, it's probably going to duck to some degree, and especially a whitetail. So that gives you the biggest margin for error. If you can wait for its head to come up, it'll duck less, and I think you've got a better sh chance at making a better shot. I want to talk about, um, I was in Texas this uh, last fall. I shot a deer there that was feeding, and it, it was a little windy, so that kind of helps, but this deer was really on edge. He'd come in, he'd put his head down for maybe 10 or 15 seconds and lift it up and look around and put his head down. Now, of course, I'm hunting in Texas in, you know, brush country, so there's not a lot of food there, so we're hunting over scattered corn. And this deer is very, they know that's danger in that area, and there's a really good chance they're going to jump and do something crazy, you know, when you get into a situation like that. You, I intentionally waited for the head to be up, and when I shot, it literally moved so little. I don't think you could. I don't think it moved till the arrow got to the deer, or actually made contact with the deer. Now take that in contrast to in 2021. I was in Mexico and I shot a very nice Mexican whitetail that its head was down eating, and that one, you know, it moved a lot. I, I made a good shot on the deer. It was quartering away, which I really like. I'm quartering away because. I can adjust my aim point back and go up into the good stuff as opposed to a lot of shots that are taken, they're quartering to you a little bit. So now you got to get it tight to the shoulder so you can catch at least that one lung and then maybe liver and you're probably coming out, you know, in stomach, guts, intestine, you know, into the part of the deer that you don't really want to hit. But it's kind of goes with the territory on them quartering shots. So, but on this particular deer, you can see in slow motion, it moved a lot. Now, it was quartering away and it made a good shot. Now, to, to watch that with the naked eye was very difficult because it really looked like that deer moved more than even, it, it moved a lot, but it even looked worse with my naked eye. Uh, and I'm thinking, boy, he really jumped the string, but he, he didn't go very far, he crashed, we found him, uh, and, and everything was good. Now, you, now, now, fast forward a year later in Texas, I shoot, I intentionally wait for the deer to put his head up and he hardly ducks at all. And then, and actually, then prior the week before that, I was in uh, in Mexico again, the same place where I killed the eight point that I'm talking about with the head down. Now this was another eight point, and he was a little bit further out. And I was shooting through a panel around the feeder. They do that so that hogs and and javelina can't come in and eat all the corn. They want the deer to jump in. Well, the bucks were just kind of circling around this panel, and I ended up shooting. The thing stopped where I had it lined up perfect and I had a six inch hole to shoot through and I got it through there. But that deer didn't really move until the arrow about got to the deer. So once again, when that head is up, it, it's unbelievable. I can, I, I've gone through all my footage and it's incredible. It's not always 100% true 
But I would say way more often than not, you're better off to have that head up. I got some footage of a mule deer, another friend of mine, Bruce Hudala shot, and uh, that thing was at the water tank, tank drinking, and it walked away and stopped, had its head up, it was alert. That deer also did not move one bit. Now, if its head would have been in the water drinking, I can almost assure you it would have reacted more than what it did. Mule deer, big old mature mule, mule deer in a setting like that, don't act, react as bad as, I believe, as, as white tails anyway. Still, it's just, you start to notice that when you're looking at antelope, mule deer, bear, hogs, white tail, you know, almost everything that we're hunting, there's a huge difference between them with their head down or being in a more natural position with the head up. And once again, I think it's because of that teeter-totter effect. And another example that that I've come up with, it's kind of like if if you're walking down a hallway and somebody jumps out in front of you and they're, you know, they're 10 feet away, it'd scare you a little bit. You, you know, you it would startle you, right? But if they, if you were walking and they came up from behind you and grabbed you, it, it, it the, the reaction will be, you'll be more scared if that's, I guess the terminology or the word I'm thinking. So that's kind of the difference to me, it seems like, between the, the head down or the head up. So I think that's a really good thing to pay attention to uh, the next time, looking at the angle, making sure you're on that lower third, making sure you, you really understand how much quartering it is so you can adjust your aiming point to compensate for that. And then the last thing that I would say is um, you really want to make sure to help with the recovery. I know recovery is a total other video, but to really pick a great landmark out of where you last saw that deer, bear, turkey, whatever you're hunting, wherever you've seen that go, if you can pick that landmark out, you will make the recovery. It's going to really help you. Somebody said they shot this deer or this hog or this bear. It was perfectly broadside. And you get over there, if you can't find the arrow immediately, or if it carried the arrow, and you get over and you find the blood trail, and uh, you know maybe there's guts dripping out, or maybe it's really, really dark, it looks like it's liver, you can kind of make an assessment and, and make a decision on what to do. So the quicker you can find that and have a good idea of where it ran without tramping around over everything and maybe, maybe jumping it up is very helpful. So we should probably do a video on recovery because there's a, a lot to that. But for this, I just wanted to talk about shot placement. And just be aware, when that head is down, if you have the opportunity to shoot when, you know, if a deer's out in a food plot feeding and it's going up and down, up and down, much better, much better off to have that head up. So anyways, hope you enjoy this video. Hope it makes sense. And I uh, look forward to uh, posting more content and more videos on my channel. And I wish everybody the best of luck in 2023 for their archery hunting season.